Hello everyone, my name is Anton. And after the last video, I have a lot of questions about 3D reconstruction, about stereo vision and so on. And I think that it's good to shoot another video about this. In this video there will be three parts. At the first part I will uh, tell you more about the theory of stereo vision, like how it's working and so on. At the second part I will tell you more about the modern state of this problem, like how you can predict mm, depths with stereo images, like with neural networks and so on. And in the third part I will tell you more about hardware, how to run everything, like which hardware you can use to mm, reconstruct your 3D. And just look at the mark in this video and just choose the part that you need because not everyone of course need like the salary. But I will try to tell you this super simple and super fast. Okay, in this video I will use two cameras to um, show you all examples. It's like these two cameras. One of them is Orb Back uh, 335L which was my previous video about and the second one is orb uh, is uh, OAG D Pro mm, both of these cameras was sent me by the vendors and um, I hope this you will like this video okay let's start from the basics this video will consist from three parts first one is about theory of stereo vision, where I will tell you a bit more about how all this stuff is working. The second part will be about the modern approaches to reconstruct stereo, like which neural network you can use and so on. And the third part will be about the hardware, like which hardware devices you can use to reconstruct 3D and so on. Mm, let's go. Okay, how does it work? Most of us have two eyes. And among all of us who have two eyes, almost 90% can use these two eyes. And how we are using these two eyes to reconstruct 3D? And it's pretty funny. Uh, check this. When I move in this object, you can see that position on these two cameras is a little bit different. And this difference is in position is defined how far this object is from us. And the stereo camera working the same. But there are a few differences that make in our life easier. First, the image is already rectified. Let me explain what it is. For example, this point. Where does it project on the different camera? Uh, excuse me. Something like this. Uh, this projection is the depending on the distance for this hill mountain, the position of uh, the top will be on this line. And uh, this line is called epipolar line. Uh, rectified image it's when uh, this line will go, for example, each point, for instance, each point of this line will go in the line on this image. So each point from this line on this image will go into this, this line on this image. Of course it's like two images from this stereo camera. So the images from one line on the second camera one will go in the same line. This called like rectified images and uh, actually we 
almost all 3D cameras like from modern vendors, they are rectified or already something like this. Here is a little quiz. Which pair is rectified and which one not? Of course, like the second one is rectified because for the first one, we can see like these lines, they are not parallel. Okay, how does it help us to reconstruct the distance for the object? And actually, it's pretty easy. You can do this with like school math. Uh, you just need to uh, reconstruct in these coordinates when you a uh, few distances, like distances between uh, both cameras, and we knew the uh, distances from our point of observation to the camera plane. Uh, it's called like focal length. Uh, we can measure this in pixels. So actually, we know these two like uh, distances, and from them we can reconstruct the uh, distances uh, with them and with uh, disparity between these two points. We can reconstruct the distance to our object. This disparity is also super simple to reconstruct. Like, of course, this disparity it's like. Uh, will be zero when the object in, is far, far away from us. And uh, it will be pretty huge where the object lying like in our camera's plane. For example, here is like the how disparity is working for OACD camera. And actually here is like the formula that can that's allowing us to reconstruct this disparity. And in this formula, as you can understand, this fx, uh, it's uh, like our focal length distance in pixels. This baseline is uh, distance between uh, our cameras. For example, for this one camera, it's like 9.5 centimeters. And for this one camera, it's 7.5 centimeters. And uh, this disparity, it's uh, uh, the distance in pixels between like uh, mm, object position in these two both cameras if the coordinates are the same. So, and uh, here we are at the point where we need to estimate our disparity uh, of the objects between these two cameras. And here it's like the most interesting point because the oldest algorithm is like the trivial one. Uh, it's just working like the same. Let's take the point on this camera and try. Uh, then we will move uh, along the epipolar line on the second camera and we will look which region is look mm, like uh, completely the same. Like where is the difference between like uh, pixel distance is the mi minimum. Uh, we can look like not on the single pixel, but of course on uh, some nearest pin pixels to it. Like we can take it's uh, here like region, for example, five to five pixels and looking for same region here. And actually this method it's uh, pre represented in uh, open CV and it's called like uh, stereo brute force matching. Of course, we are just brute forcing this uh, similarity. Mm. And there are a lot of such methods in open CV. Uh, for example, there is like stereo uh, SGBM uh, approach and there are some different approaches, but all approaches in open CV it's just some mm, mathematical approaches when we look like this similarity between two regions. But of course, like uh, when algorithms developed somewhere in 2014, 2015, people start thinking about, wait a second, why we should use these old algorithms uh, when we already have all these beautiful neural networks? And people start searching about how can it work. 
Check this, the history of such networks from papers with code. Mm, for example, this one, this one, this one. Wait a second. Why there are so small amount of them? Why there is no networks before 2019? Was there any networks? And uh, let's think a bit how the neural network can reconstruct this stereo disparity between two images. Maybe it could be like the regular neural network. Let's put like, for example, two image in the beginning of the network and predict like disparity for each output, like basic segmentation network. And the old people from the past, they also think like this. But it wasn't working like pretty good. And they even knew about this. And the main problem, like when we look in how convolutional neural network is working, uh, each point it doesn't see super far from itself. And the farther the point when this point it lo is looking, the weaker the correspondence between them. And in reality, modern stereo neural network, they are not working like this. But of course, like in 2015, 2016, all neural networks, they look almost like this. But people at that time, they were understand that probably it's, it's not the greatest method to reconstruct the stereo depths. How does it work in today? There are a lot of approaches to this problem. For example, you can check this SRE stereo with a recurrent sub neural network, which are reconstructing, uh, like each layer is reconstructing estimation which is uh, used by the next layer, uh, which trying to reconstruct the next estimation. And each one layer like reconstructing a little bit better. Or for example, like uh, this one is HitNet, it's multi-stage uh, neural network, where there is a special uh, neural network layer, which provide correlation between different images to estimate like optimum of this correlation for each point. It's looking like actually a little bit simpler to this super old algorithm. Can you run these neural networks on NVIDIA? Actually, yes. And it will work pretty fast and perfect. Right now, it's like the real time prediction uh, on my uh, GPU uh, 3060 on my laptop. Great. Will it work on Intel? For the Intel, it will be not so great. Uh, but yes, you can run with inference like one time per second. Let's move to other hardware. And here we have a lot of problems. And the most problems, it's about all this mess I mentioned when I uh, speak about all this modern neural network. Uh, how do you think? Will it work good on all this neural accelerators, which I like? tens of videos on my channel about different NPU units. And of course, it will not work on them. Uh, I tested them on around 10 different neural networks, which I took like here or here or here. Uh, and I check this on a lot of different boards, for example, like few rock chips, NXP with uh, very silicon architecture, Huawei. I looked at Halo documentation. I checked like a few different processors. Of course, I like checked on NVIDIA, for example, on my laptop. And what do you think? Where did it work? And here is like a pretty sad news. On rock chips, there was only super old neural network, like six year old. Uh, it was stereo net and real time stereo. Uh, this stereo net, it's uh, also worked for Halo, according to the documentation. It's the only stereo network that worked for Halo. Uh, and, uh, but the results of such network was pretty bad. Here's you can like see all, all these examples. For example, like 
here is stereo net on rock chip here is like real time stereo on nxp some networks they are working a little bit better for example like this is coex on huawei and this is unimatch on huawei but the same unimatch when i run it on my laptop it gives me this same network same almost the same code gives me this result so actually i tested a lot of such uh, neural networks on a lot of hardware and the result in my opinion it's pretty sad to run such neural network the best platform is actually nvidia platform or intel platform from intel platform you can run such neural networks almost everywhere for example like even when i mentioned this camera it's like oogd it has intel myriad x processor and it can run a lot of depth neural networks they are they will be pretty slow for example like this one video is from my uh, previous article about neural networks and it's a little bit terrible like small resolution small slow inference and you just can't run this fast enough on specifically this device and if we will check like new was neural network it will be the same problem so what i recommend you if you want to run your stereo reconstruction neural network on the edge jetsons nvidia some cpu processors actually like even rock chip they will be not super slow neural network if you will run them on rock chips i will try to test more platforms I will put this result on my channel if they will be interesting. In my opinion, it's already pretty interesting uh, insights that only these super popular platforms, uh, they are working with such networks. And of course, by the way, like with NVIDIA, it will be not possible to use these networks on DLA, on like regular uh, GPU. So thank you for the attention. I hope this helped you. Goodbye.